Hey, welcome. This is The Process. My name is Dr. John Bush, representing the science of fantasyfootball.com. This is where me and my partner, D. Mike, lay it out, spread it thick, and hopefully give you a little bit to think about here. We don't want to tell you what to do. We just want to try to get you some tools to inspire deeper thinking probably if you're hanging here with us the few that are thank you for listening uh you probably are not satisfied by just looking at some type of list on twitter or whatever this is the seventh best this is the eighth and it's just like what anyway uh you know don't don't do that be thoughtful be thinking you want to improve, trying to give you some lessons here and thought, and at least show you my process. See if there's aspects you need to incorporate into your in season, of course, preseason and draft games around the uh, year here. And we got plenty of uh, material and lessons for you to catch up on. So, introduction week three. A uh, big Thursday game. We're going to look at game scripts, match up the rankings with uncertainty. Vegas and scoring information, as well as defense against the position, my so called DAPS, and my uncertainty level ranking. So if you haven't seen me before, I'll go through it. Uh, first thing I like to consider is Vegas and scoring information. I like to kind of know who's the favorite, who's the underdog, and think about the over-under points. If it's above 49, then I'm thinking high scoring, especially in PPR, lots of touchdown and passing, all the way down to low scoring games, 42 below. You're thinking more maybe some more rushing, maybe a defensive struggle. You're a little bit uh, more pessimistic about uh, scoring and PPR points here. It's nice to see game spread a little bit. If uh, It's always important if a team is figured to, you know, just 10-point favorite or whatever, the danger there, you're thinking, how can it be danger? Danger there is you're playing players X and Y on the so-called super favorite, and they get so far ahead that they pull them and put the next player up. Uh, being a New Orleans Saints fan, and uh, back in the day, I would uh, draft Drew Brees, and it was all well and good until the Saints were too far ahead, then they would pull him. Or I don't know who the flavor of the week was, the backup quarterback. So, you know, I'd lose, what, five, six points, maybe a touchdown. And uh, if you've played fantasy, uh, that can win or lose your week. So that uh, makes it very sad, very, very sad. And I think about the scoring of the favorite and the underdog kind of just anticipating how many touchdowns uh, might be scored, that kind of thing. So obviously the more touchdowns, the better for all. And if it's a, more of a passing type offense, then you're thinking maybe a deeper play on the wide receivers or the pass catching. Running backs, if it's a defensive kind of game, you're thinking more of the rushers and uh, maybe not so enthusiastic about the passers and the pass catchers. Think about that. The defense against the position table. This is the last week uh, I'm using uh, last year. Uh, frankly, two weeks is pretty risky. I know we're using last year how – I don't know, I haven't done the study, but at least it gives us something to think about. And so I never said this is the end all be all. It's just a way to point us to deeper thinking. That's it. And if 
wherever you're at or if you go to multiple places, if that place is not inspire you to learn and be a deeper thinker, then that's probably not the place for you. Anyway, the DAPs, D-A-F, we look at the teams, the opponent. So I want to get a sense of how tough the defense is. Is it a home versus away game for the team I'm looking at? You know, home field advantage. There is something to that. I know there are some home and away splits. Just be realize early in the season, do we really have enough data to even call that? I don't know. Just just until otherwise, just assume if they're at home, they probably, I think Vegas, what, adds two or three points to the home field advantage or something like that. I mean, think about the, the home people. They don't have to fly. They don't have to check into a hotel, pull in the fire alarms, all the, you know, eating out. So you get a little food poisoning and a little over exuberance. And uh, it's just a different game than staying at home and, you know, being by your home fires. Uh, so I like to see is the game, uh, is the defense uh, team is playing against, are they easy, above average easy, below average tough, or very tough, and I colorize red to green. So I'm not going to give you metrics, just give you kind of labels there. And then I look at the rushing game, the RB, and then I group the passers, quarterbacks, wide receivers, and, and tight ends. So that's kind of the passing metric there. Uh, I know there are rushing quarterbacks, Jalen Hurst, et cetera. Then the kickers are separate than the defense. That you want to stream a defense and whatnot. So for streaming and for, you know, daily fantasy uh, plays, this can put you on to potential players or take you off of potential players. Then my rankings table, I look now at the player level. Okay, so I haven't been looking at the player level here. Now we so kind of going top down, thinking about the game as a whole, the defenses and how that's going to play, the odds, the spread. Now we look at the players, right? How are they potentially uh, uh, ranked, the team, the position, my rankings, that's Fantasy Sports Professor Rankings, FSPR, so yeah, there it is. And then the uncertainty level that I've assigned for this week for that player. So the rankings from all the positions are 1 to 100, some rare situations that are above 100 because the player just is off the chart, right? Kelsey, Andrews this week, I think, are off the chart. Each player is projected to have three levels, one of three uncertainty, high uncertainty, average, and low. Think about high uncertainty players have a large range of outcomes. Maybe they're better than I'm thinking, but they could be really worse. So, you, you know, how high is the ceiling and the floor, right? versus the low is a very uh, more narrow range, right? So it's the ceiling, you know, you're going to bump your head in that house, right, versus the floor. So my ranking may be a little bit more realistic there. And, of course, average is somewhere in the middle. So low uncertainty players that are highly ranked should be, quote, safe, nothing safe, but, quote, safe. High uncertainty uh, figures to be less safe. Uh, you know, low rank players, that's probably not good. So think about the orbit, right, around my ranking number. Is it really, is it like Pluto around the sun or is it Mercury around the sun? High versus low there. So lots of possibilities. So uh, just realize here and what I found is extreme low and high scoring you can have a lot of kind of game uncertainty a little bit so just be aware about that a little bit that Vegas you know they're there not to predict as much as make money regardless of how the game flows okay 
this week, so I'm actually fired up. Eh, maybe not. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, it is predicted to be a uh, uh-oh, low, score, low scoring game, 39 points. That's sad. That, you know, and that may be the best case scenario. This could be even worse. Browns are figured by, what, six points, so basically a touchdown. 25-14-ish, eh, maybe three touchdowns, maybe two touchdowns, so maybe five total. Uh, certainly not a game that I'm getting all fired up about here. I, I may not even watch much of it. I may just go highlights and follow all the overreactions on Twitter. The next little block here is the, the game, the team, the week is week three. The segment is we're still in the front half. Uh, Cleveland's playing at home. It's always good. So some of that spread is home. Pittsburgh's going to have to travel. And uh, Cleveland faces uh, kind of a, eh, a defense from Pittsburgh. I don't know if they're – they may have been tough years ago, but they're just below average tough. And uh, Pittsburgh, on the other hand, is facing a very tough Cleveland, at least that's how this uh, shakes out. The rushing tonight, Cleveland with Chubb figures to have his way hunt. So I'm a little bit more optimistic and notice uh, it's above average easy. So that's good. Uh, Pittsburgh, Najee Harris, eh, he's what, been hurt a little bit? A eh, little bit concerned there. So if you drafted him, you're number one. You probably don't have much choice, so play him. But just, you know, you may be uh, in your Sunday rake, uh, uh, lineups. You may have to uh, try to replace the, what day you lose tonight. But, you know, he's your stud. You picked him first. So you kind of, you know, bought that bought that dinner, so you got to eat it now. And... uh you know, I got him in a few leagues, probably not as many as most, but still got him in a few of my 50 or so uh, redraft leagues. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, it's all tough. Okay, and Cleveland's tight end, really tough. So I'm underwhelmed by the passing potential in the quarterbacks and, uh, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, Fryermuth, I did pick him in a few leagues. Hopefully, he'll stumble into the end zone here. I mean, I probably will have to pl play him, but in a streaming, if you've uh, got somebody better, you probably don't if you drafted him as your one. Uh, you probably, again, kind of like Harris, you kind of, you know, bought that farm. You got to play it now. Uh, apparently, Cleveland's kicker is the way to go if you're betting on kickers on props and Pittsburgh's D might be eh, might be a, a sneaky play in daily fantasy if you're playing what if they have those one game matchup things, whatever. I don't really invest a lot there. I just not that don't make any money at those kind of things. Okay. So Cleveland, here's the Browns. I, I do like their defense. Average uncertainty, the kicker, eh. Anything below 50 is eh. Uh, the quarterback is zero. Okay. So eh, worst of the week maybe. Chubb, again, and Hunt, you probably are on those, and I definitely would, would jump. Chubb, you never know quite his range. Uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to get two or three touchdowns, but he might get one. But don't be, you know, surprised if he doesn't get, you know, a touchdown. But he'll probably get you a nice little floor. Tight ends, eh, I'm not playing either one of those. I guess Cooper figures at 60. It's above average, so it's okay, but. This quarterback is zero, and he's high uncertainty. Uh, Peoples Jones has been getting a lot of attention, just hasn't converted to points. So you know, in a weird game like this, he might surprise. Daily fantasy, maybe he's your captain. I don't know. Just 
I wouldn't spend any money on it, but a dollar for a holler game, then maybe that's how you play this. It's, you know, everybody's probably going to be on Cooper, and maybe you should, you know, jump on uh, people's shows. I don't know. I think we're still waiting for David Bell to, to break out. And uh, that may not happen until we get a quarterback change here. Okay, Swartz, uh, I don't know. You can play him, I guess. Pittsburgh, uh, defenses, eh, maybe. Kicker, eh, quarterback, no, probably not. Harris is at 69, okay? I like 75 to be a super play. 69 is, yeah, you probably stuck with him as your one, but average uncertainty, it's just, I'm unenthusiastic about his outcome. Prior move, I think I, I do like him this, this week at 82, my rankings, but boy, this is a tough script for him to play into. I even ranked him as low because I think he's got a shot at, you know, he's going to get some targets and kind of a minimum, but I would think to my head that his ceiling is just not as high as it could be this week. Deontay Johnson, 68, he figures a little better than Cooper. Claypool, 50, about average. Pickens, I'm just, again, just underwhelmed. I'm hoping they'll get some targets. This is, to me, this kind of game is, okay, what kind of floor can I get? If I've got to play these wide receivers in both teams, who's got the better floor? And I guess Johnson has the best floor of all of them, but Peoples-Jones might surprise. I don't know. This is not anything I'm betting your money with, but this is how I see it, underwhelming start to the week, hopefully, and, and there's there's better games ahead. And, uh, you know, Sunday we're going to see some nice high-scoring shootouts, and so let's hope for better situations to come here. So thanks for listening. Uh, try to get the Sunday matchups uh, maybe by Saturday morning, hopefully. And then Monday game, hopefully Monday morning. You can hear me run my mouth for a while if you get tired of me. Okay. And, of course, when I did my flexing the stream article this week, my snap report, my snappy snap report, Dennis hit you with the waiver wire, his weekly values articles up. We did our uh, Data Lab podcast for frequency's sake. We did our Science of Fantasy Football thir- uh Wednesday, and we're going to do a Friday kind of short take, kind of get you ready for Sunday and kind of recover from this game here. That should be out Saturday. We got some podcasts and whatnot. So I wish you good luck. Remember, it's week three. It's not time to just go eight bonkers being crazy here, but be thoughtful. Make some, you know, waiver wire maybe for next week. Look at uh, streaming defenses. Look at some of the spot plays that are out there. Uh, maybe I should do a spot plays. But the week four is tough because I, I need to recalculate all my uh, daps. So it, maybe I'll try to include that in week five, kind of my look ahead. Okay. Uh-uh. Anyway, okay. Woo-woo, we're having fun. Good luck tonight.